A precious delivery arrives at a dock in the Mediterranean. Years of ambition and determination wrapped up in cardboard and tape. This is something that we've put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into. You can have this one, to here. The pump is over there also. It's really exciting, but at the same time, we're all sort of on edge. We only have one bag this trip because of my sewing machine. <laughs> Broken. What started as a dream to clean the ocean is about to face its toughest test. So Sergio, yeah. connect it up. Everybody's aware of the ocean problem with the plastics, thanks to social media. We came in at a time where the world was screaming for a, for a solution. All right, turn it on. No, don't turn it on, but we need to fill with water. So where is the hose? We're a little bit worried that if we show a final product that is not really perfect and it fails somehow, then there's going to be a bit of backlash and negativity about it. So will it work? Let's do it. It's an island known for its crystal clear waters, sandy beaches, a playground for tourists. Yeah, yeah, got the weddies. It's also where a couple of Australians have decided to base their startup. You're taking that as well? Yeah. How many boards are going up? Pete Seglinski comes from a background of product design and manufacturing and used to have what most of us would call a dream gig. I was working as a boat builder in a company that was specialising in racing yachts. This got me invited to some pretty big gigs overseas, like the America's Cup and the Volvo Ocean Race. We were working our butts off. Come on, sun. Come on, waves. Come on, everything. And then we'd have two weeks off and I'd run off to Mexico or Brazil somewhere and go surfing. And, and then the next stop was in India or China or anywhere. We never had to pay for anything. We got flights everywhere around the world. They paid for accommodation, food, salary. It was great. It was while he was on tour that Pete realised he couldn't ignore a widespread problem the world over. The world's oceans are so disgusting and polluted, it's not funny. And to be honest, we're not even seeing the most of it because 70% is an estimate the marine pollution is on the bottom of the seafloor and only 30% is what we visually see. So it's pretty bad. So we made a life-changing decision, throwing the high-paying job in exchange for trying to do something useful. I gave up uh, this really good gig of travelling around the world and being financially secure and I gave up that because I'd never done anything for anybody else or for the environment before and I, I've always wanted to be in a position where I can work on a project or an idea or, or a business or even for myself where I can make a, a positive impact on somebody else or the environment. They named it the Sea Bin. Based on the idea of water draining from a bath, it's designed to suck in rubbish floating in ports and marinas. Talk to me about the technology of it, because someone said to me, oh, isn't it just a big pool skimmer, basically? And <laughs> what kind of pump do you need for that? Doesn't it need to be huge? The technology in the Sea Bin is the most simple thing ever. It's, it's, it's the same as a, as a pool skimmer. 
This is the filter. And this is the sea bin. And this is a water pump. And when the floating rubbish comes in, this bottle, it stops in here. And then the water still passes through. And, and just like a land-based bin, when the sea bin fills, it has to be emptied, the liner replaced. The greatest challenge is to have that in a, in a natural environment with the tidal range and with waves and boats and uh, to, to have that functioning. We have an internal component which adjusts to the waves and, the, uh, and, and if a boat goes past and it washes in, the internal component moves up and down as well. I'm not going to explain the million dollar way, like the, the idea how it works though on camera. Even with their patents in place, the CBIN team knows hardware alone doesn't equal success. We identified very early on that the CBIN itself the, wasn't a total or a final solution to the problem of marine plastics in, in the environment. How does a marine scientist with a PhD end up on a lean startup like this? Some people might say you're a little bit crazy. A lot of people would say I'm a little bit crazy. I could be earning more, but I don't think that's the only uh, measurement in life. How sick are the oceans at the moment? Uh, I get asked that a lot and I don't often know how to answer. The situation, it is grim. There's a lot of problems, there's a lot of pressure on the oceans. But in saying that, I think that more than asking ourselves what a bad state the oceans are, what we need to ask ourselves is what we can do to change the situation around, to ameliorate and to take action on simple activities by ourselves that will result in a betterment of the marine environment. And I think that's the change in perception that we need to have. met Pete roughly three years ago when I was traveling and we ended up doing a road trip together and sharing dreams and goals I guess. I was quite stubborn and decided that I was going to continue my travels so we went uh, separate ways. As a fly-in fly-out worker in the Pilbara, Sasha Chapman kept an eye on Pete and his progress. We continued to be in contact the whole time and I was really proud of what he was doing. I guess my passion began to grow for wanting to make a difference for future generations and for the environment. When Pete said there was a position available for me to come over and um, then I, um, yeah, I flew straight over here. Any regrets about doing that? No, none. No regrets whatsoever. The lean startup has had anything but a smooth ride a little over a year ago, after spending every cent he had, Pete kicked off a crowdfunding campaign in a desperate attempt to raise some cash. I was a product designer in another life and it was my job to make plastic products. And after a while I realised that we didn't need the stuff that I was making and so I stopped. It's been a big change in our life. We quit our jobs, we've taken all our money and we've put our heart and souls into making this happen. Imagine that, we have a pollution-free ocean for our future generations. It was a slow start and Pete had almost given up. We had like $155,000 with one or two days to go and if we didn't make it, you get zero. So in probably in the last week of our crowdfunding campaign, my personal savings, which I'd saved about $60,000, I was going to use that to buy my parents some land. And, uh, um, sorry. Are you okay? Yeah. I get really emotional about that. Yeah. No, that was just the hardest thing that I've ever done, was the crowdfunding. Like, I was like, nearly emotionally broken two times and uh, I've never experienced that before in my life, eh? So... 
we made 267,000 American dollars and it was absolutely phenomenal. With the gamble paying off, Pete's been able to fit out the factory, pay the staff, albeit on minimum wage. Yo, how's it? Hey, Pete. Hi. Hiya. Good, good, good. And get down to the business of preparing the sea bin for market. And this part goes into here. From a heap of hard work and heartache, the V5 hybrid sea bin finally emerged. And so now it's one year later and we are like 99% done. Is it possible to have a quick sit down to discuss the Grand Martin product? Yeah, sure. Cheers, guys. Before commercial production begins, Pete and the team have to present a fully functioning sea bin to financial backers in Le Grand Motte, a marina in France, in less than a week. There's a lot of pressure to, uh, to give back to our crowdfunders, the people that supported us. We have our shareholders and we have the pilot partners and just in general the pressure for us to to have a product and not just a prototype or an idea anymore. But before Pete gets down to finishing the sea bin, Sergio and Sasha have organised a community event to help their research and raise awareness. We realised that the Seabin was a very powerful tool to broadcast this problem to a very large audience, not only through social media, but also by actively engaging and helping the new generations get a better appreciation of these problems. So today, uh, Sasha and Sergio, they've organised a beach clean-up with all our friends, and we're pretty stoked because there's 45 people with uh, children ranging from three years old to adults. Está en inglés, pero es bastante sencillita. Entonces vamos a recoger desde el puerto hasta la riera. Eh, no tenemos muchas, tenemos siete, o sea que lo hacéis en, en pequeños grupos. Sergio has set up a like a, a data sheet where we can see what we're catching. Os vamos a dar estas bolsas. Y cuando vais tomando información sobre la basura que recojáis y cuando está llena... No, no, unos se podrán ir para allá, otros directamente para allá. Acordaros que no es embatida, os podéis ir distribuyendo desde el puerto. Their army of supporters fan out across the Palma Beach in search of plastic. Lila, está azul. So yeah, so we want to support them because Saving Project have a great idea. So yeah, we are super happy to help here. <laughs> when you come down here and you look at the beach, it, it looks pretty clean. Then you went up, you know, you, you get up quite closer and oh my God, there's just plastic everywhere. What are you finding mostly? A lot of cigarette butts. And then a lot of the time there'll be these sticks this is something that we're constantly finding. It's from the end of the earbuds, and people will flush them down the toilet. This is something that we'd never seen before, and we've been here for a few years and been around the world and seen all the problems. It was these baby wipes that had just sort of wrapped themselves around this seagrass. It's been marketed as like being like toilet paper, and you know it's going to break down, but it doesn't. What do you get out of it? Why do you do this? There is a lot of things we get out of it, apart from karma and feeling good that we've helped made a difference. By understanding this littering and uh, floating waste situation, then we can adapt this to the sea bin technology later in the, later in the future, be it with uh, different filters or designing something to catch macroplastics or even smaller with the microplastics. This is all information that we're collecting that we can use.
Back at base, Sergio the scientist wants to see what they've got. Uh, cinco con 41 kilos. All the volunteers are finalizing filling out their data sheets and I've got a scale here which I'm weighing their bags. So we're writing down the amount of bugs, bags they collected and how much they weigh. And I will collect all the data sheets and we'll tally them up afterwards. And I'll make a, a little report with all the stuff that we've collected. All the degraded bits of plastic like this, in time we'll uh, keep degrading into smaller and smaller pieces till it becomes microplastics. Smaller animals eat it, the fish eat it, and then we catch fish and then we, it wow. ends up in our plates. So whatever goes around, comes around. With almost 53 kilos of rubbish off the beach, it's time to relax. This was like the most perfect project ever because I could go surfing, I could do traveling, I could do design work, I could use my hands to build this stuff and I could uh, develop the technology, I could build partnerships, I could do collaborations with people and we can help attack this global like, littering problem that ends up in the ocean. And so, why not? Goodwill and community support is great for confidence, but the deadline's looming. They're due in France in a matter of days, and the sea bin is far from finished. At the moment, I need to make a fixing for where we put the, the sea bin on the dock on the floating pontoon. I'm just doing some engineering on the computer, 3D modelling, and then I create a drawing, and then I'll go downstairs and I've got a bit of steel, and I'll start cutting that up and welding it. And then uh, I'll have myself a bracket that we can use to install the sea bin on. But you've only got a few days. If I can't get this bracket to work, and if I can't build it um, within the next two days, then we simply cannot install a sea bin and all our investing the time and money and uh, the pressure from a lot of other people, it would be, um, yeah, it would be pretty bad if we don't get this done. So everything is actually um, depending on this one piece. And it's very dependent on you. You are actually carrying a great deal of the load, aren't you? Yeah, um, definitely. This, the, the pressure of getting this one piece and then every other piece of the puzzle together is landing pretty heavily on my shoulders. But uh, it's all right, I enjoy a challenge. doing this because we simply don't have the funds to get people to build stuff for us. This is why we stocked up on tools and skills uh, when we started this whole thing. The moment of truth. See if it fits. Well, first moment of truth. Yeah. All good. Just need some big bolts. That'll be fine. How nervous do you get with every moment of truth? A little bit. Definitely get a little bit nervous if we're going to go all the way to the Grand Mott and then have something that doesn't fit or we, we forgot to bring the bolts or the nuts. A little bit of pressure. They've got the bracket working in the factory, so they put it to the test in a local Palma marina. But it's not quite right. Hello. Megan. Didn't sound too healthy. No, it didn't. 
I'm nervous for him as well. You know, he's put a lot of time and energy, effort, money into this project as well. And um, also all the crowdfunding that's gone into, I guess, this moment where it's just, um, yeah, hoping it all happens. Were you expecting to have to do this last minute modification? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's always surprises. That's what keeps you on your feet, isn't it? Are you, ha are you happy with it now, do you think? I'll see you in a second. And it works. Happy days. Another milestone in the bag, it's back to the factory for yet more modifications before they head to France. Do you have to sew a new cashback? Yeah, two. So we can do a change. Pete plays it cool, but the stress is building. The 20 hour days are taking their toll. We need to paint the sea bin, we need to make a little, uh, like a little tent or something so we can put it in there and we can put heat on it. It's so cold that um, the last time the paint didn't dry for like three days. The last thing they need is a power outage. Mejor ha habido un corte en la calle, pero en principio parece que alrededor hay. Uh, electricidad. What do we have outstanding that needs electricity? There's no time to wait for electricians. They've got less than 24 hours to get the sea bin ready for travel, power or not. You've taken a high stand about dealing with companies that you feel don't share your ethical views. Is that a bit naive? We don't really see the worth in partnering with this maybe a, a big industrial giant that is raping and pillaging the earth and then turn around and go, here's a million bucks and, uh, you know, create a sea bin and we're going to help you and try and make ourselves look better. and. And in the end, we look like idiots because, yeah, it's, it's not good. So we've been politely declining their offers and just sort of sticking it out and hoping that the right people would come along and there's a couple of people that we think are suitable. And uh, at the end of the day, we had our crowdfunding money and we did that because we really wanted to give it a go ourselves. They've worked through the night, and despite the curveballs they've faced this week, the sea bin team and their precious cargo make the early morning flight. They reached the rather wacky 60s seaside resort of La Grande Motte. It's just over a year since the fundraising success. Everything is hanging on this moment. They've got to shine. It's been a pretty dramatic week. Yeah, definitely. We've had a lot of hurdles this week and well, for the last one year, but uh, everything sort of came to a head this week and uh, I think we've ironed out all the bugs. Failure here would be devastating for them. You've been waiting a long time? Now it's uh, one year and one month, I think. We signed a, a partenariat for develop and uh, to be the first port 
try to, to put the sieve in and, uh, the, and clean, clean the port. Let's do it. Okay. With everything finally in place, we collectively hold our breath. Working. Each dip draws in water and rubbish with an almost mesmerising gurgle. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. See all this starting to come. You can see like the, the oil pulling in, creating a small current. I'm equally amazed and relieved. In the coming months, commercial production and sales of the sea bin will begin. And what will success look like for you? Success, I have a vision in my head of me rocking up to some tropical country with a plastic pollution problem and under one arm I've got my surfboard and under the other arm I've got my sea bin and we're off to visit the mayor or the city officials or something and get the job done and we go for a surf and then come back and do another job. So that's success for me. Because sea bin's not going to save the world, is it? Seabin's definitely not going to save the world, but it's a start. It's, it's a step in the right direction of saving the world. <laughs>